Tonight, we bear witness to another chapter in the history of Daytona as NASCAR's crown jewel gleams in the Florida night for the first time. This evening, the celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary continues as TNN Motorsports is proud to present Daytona at the speed of light. This is not normal Saturday night racing. This is racing under the lights of Daytona. 3.5 million watts of power lighting up a two and a half mile racetrack. Now the drivers have tested here. They're ready to go. They say they love it, but there's going to be some pressure. Pressure on these guys. They're the spotters. Their job is to tell the driver when it's safe to move up on the track, safe to move down low, safe to pass, safe to get back in line. One mistake on their part or a mistake on the part of the drivers behind the wheels. When you're racing at Daytona with restrictor plates, you could have big trouble. There's nothing to do about it. You're just out there riding. Especially at Daytona, you see guys go three wide, you kind of tense up. You know, you're like, oh, no, please don't do that. Just, you know, you're praying that you can get out of the racetrack or the racing line. And there was big trouble last weekend at Talladega. Ernie Irvin into the wall hard. Mark Martin's championship hopes took a severe blow as he was involved in that melee. Now, if you can avoid the big one and get to the front, then you have to have partners. You have to make a deal. When it comes right down there to the end, you need a partner out there. Actually, Todd and Mike talked Saturday night, and then Mike and I talked on Sunday. We just saw each other right before the race. There's different guys in the pack that, that are comfortable working with you or you're comfortable working with them that you'll work with through the race. Try to work with that person as long as you can until it comes time to win. Well, the end result of that deal is to try to get here in victory lane. But if you don't have the right partner, it's usually no deal. you got to have help. You want to deal with a teammate if you got one. If not, at least a driver who drives the same make car that you do. But sometimes, like last week with Dale Jarrett and Mike Skinner at Talladega, it's an unlikely alliance. But no matter who you deal with, it doesn't matter. At the end, what it all boils down to is that it's every man for himself. All deals are off in the final five laps. And the reason why, it's a single lane road here into victory lane. You cannot bring that partner with you. The Pepsi 400, a July 4th holiday tradition, moved to October due to Florida's midsummer wildfires. But tonight, with a state-of-the-art lighting system illuminating the night sky, there is a holiday feel to Daytona International Speedway as we are just 12 minutes away from the green flag. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the World Center of Racing. Eli Gold, Dick Bergren, and Buddy Baker. You know, ever since this race was postponed back in July, everybody's been looking to this stretch of the schedule. Unprecedented two restrictor plate races back-to-back. -back. Last week, lap 137, a major accident at Talladega. Some teams have been able to rebuild their cars. Others have chunked them. They're starting over. You know the story of Ernie Irvin. He hasn't been in the car much, but he's here ready to go racing tonight with Ricky Craven having done all the work this weekend. Last weekend, the Thunderbirds were a story. There were five of them. Two finished in the top ten. Four T-Birds going racing tonight. And everybody's run here at Daytona. Experience isn't a problem. But it is something new under the lights and the shadows and all of the glare that maybe or maybe not could be a storyline as this evening continues. And Buddy Baker, that's where you come in. 19 top fives here. You've won a couple of races here. Is everybody starting at square one again, or does experience matter? I think experience matters when you go to Daytona or Talladega. You have to know how to drive. But one thing to keep in mind, there are so many questions that hadn't been answered. Nobody's actually run 400 miles under the lights here. They're going to have little things that happen in this race that they've never experienced. It is, though, an electric atmosphere. Have you ever experienced anything like it, Dick Bergman? Nothing like this. And this is restrictor plate racing. And you talk about some drama. Listen to this. Last year, there were four restrictor plate races. Races, four different winners. This year, so far, three restrictor plate races, three different winners. How about upsets? In the last four years here in this event, there have been two first-time winners. But one man who has been a winner here at Daytona for years is the Reverend Hal Marchman. He is the chaplain for Daytona International Speedway. He is now set to offer this evening's invocation. Needless.
needless to say, not a seat to be had. Long since sold out. Heck, here on Fud Pole qualifying the other day, we had a crowd larger than many Daytona 500s, if not that many years ago. The engines have fired. We are set to go racing and so honored to be with you on TNN Motorsports for Daytona at the speed of light. They light it up as they go green in a moment. Gordon is coverage of the Pepsi 400. Everybody, let's take a look at the starting lineup for this 40th renewal of the Pepsi 400. On the butt pole, Bobby Labonte has won three of four restrictor plate poles here in 1998. Jeff Burton, his best restrictor plate finish, is fifth in the 98 Daytona 500. Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte sharing role number two. Couple of big track veterans. Of course, Dale Earnhardt, who won here in February. And Mark Martin with seven wins in 1998. Rusty Wallace was quickest, actually second fastest in happy hour here yesterday. And Jeff Gordon with two Daytona wins, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series point leader. Mike Skinner led the most laps at Talladega a weekend ago. And the first start for Hutt Strickland driving the second car for Andy Petrie Racing. The leading rookie of this year is Kenny Irwin. And Ward Burton is alongside in row number six. A former winner here, the 1990 Daytona 500 winner Derek Cope and John Andretti who won this race a year ago. Steve Park and Ken Schrader share row number eight. Kenny Schrader, he was on the butt pole just one weekend ago at Talladega. Look at those flash bulbs just illuminating further this Daytona International Speedway. Sterling Marlin and give a call to Billy Standridge, guys. He comes to the big tracks, not a full-time runner. He's always in the field. You're exactly right and he's doing a Thunderbird and the rules are really not that good for the Thunderbird. Billy's doing a great job. Dan Pardis on the right of your screen, a local Daytona favorite in his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. He comes from the ARCA Bondo Marhive series. Joe Nemechek and Kenny Wallace sharing the 27th and 28th starting positions. Michael Waltrip and Dave Marcus, who a week ago had his best finish since Bristol in 1994. He had a Childress engine then. He has a Childress engine now. He could be very strong tonight. There you see Jerry Nadeau and Ted Musgrave, 33rd and 34th starters. Wally Dallenbach, he was fast last night in practice. And Rich Bickle, in a restrictor plate race. He's missed the other ones this year. There's Jimmy Spencer's T-Bird. Doesn't qualify well, but he might be coming to the front. So he says, good to see Ernie Irvin. And Johnny Benson had a little problem here last night in happy hour. The hood blew off that thing in happy hour. Damaged the back end of that car. They worked on it, fixed the roof, put a new hood on it, and got him back out in time for happy hour to finish. And there you see the 43rd starter, Darrell Walsh of Franklin, Tennessee, as this field gets set to go green. The first time ever under the lights. The Pepsi 400 for the first time ever on TNN. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the petting view from any angle. You know how dedicated the fellows were from Musco Lighting to get this project right they went through the richard petty driving school to better understand the lights that are required for super speedway racing that's what you call dedication now let's take a look and see what it looks like from the driver's point of view wally donenbeck few shadows coming off the wall what kind of feedback are you hearing about that buddy and you've driven out here well you know we're, we're talking about those shadows off the cars, as you see against the wall there. Right down on the outside of the wall there, there's a little shadow there. But nothing like the daytime when you're squinting with the sun in your face going into turn one. I think the visibility is much better tonight than it is any time during the daytime. That's what everybody is saying, you know. It's amazing how well you can see. Look how bright it is from Steve Park's ride. Looking up at Derek Cope's car there. Let's see, 180 on water temperature. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Gordon climbing the banking here at Daytona International Speedway. All he's got to do is finish 16th or better in the remaining races. And the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship is his. From just down the street apiece, Mark Martin lives here in Daytona Beach, as so many of you know. Tried his hardest this year to hang right there with Jeff Gordon. It's been so tough. And there you see Bobby Labonte, our Bud Pole sitter, getting set to take the green in this very first.
first race, such a historic occasion. And you know, NASCAR racing has had so many historical happenings over the last number of years, whether it's new racetracks, new faces, new events. But this really, I think, takes the cake.